fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. Tonight I want to start with a story from the Epic of Gilgamesh. Has anyone ever heard of the Epic of Gilgamesh? One or a few people. The Epic of Gilgamesh predates the Hebrew Bible. There were stories before the Hebrew Bible. In this particular story in the Epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh and his friend Enkidu decide what they're going to do is they're going to go on a quest and they're going to slay the demon Humbaba who is the guardian of this beautiful, beautiful cedar of Lebanon forest. He's a demigod of sorts. So they take off on their journey, <clears throat> and they succeed. Enkidu dies, however, King Gil Gilgamesh ends up slaying the demigod. And afterwards, what does he do? He cuts down all the trees in the forest, this forest stretched from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea. He cuts them all down and takes them back to the city of Uruk to adorn his palace. Now, scholars believe that this is actually a metaphor, a metaphor for the downfall of the Sumerian civilization. Over a period of about 2,000 years, the Sumerians destroyed this forest. They planted their crops, they grazed their cattle, they cut down the trees, provided heat and fuel. After about 2,000 years, the soil became depleted, the environment became desolate and desert-like, and eventually, like so many other empires, up to the present day, the empire went down with not a bang, but a whimper. Trees are very, very important. Wouldn't you say so? Yes. yes. Now, a quarter million tree acres, I'm sorry, a quarter million acres are destroyed every 24 hours. That is amazing. Trees, trees photosynthesize. They grow out of the soil. Man cuts it down. He puts it in his fireplace. He has heat. He has light. The animal, he eats the vegetation photosynthesized by the sun. He converts that sunlight energy to his own energy. The hunter, he shoots it. He eats that internalized sunlight energy, becomes his energy. We produce waste products, it goes into the ground. The cycle of life starts all over again. Richard Garriott, the entrepreneur billionaire from Austin, the gaming tycoon, who one of the only civilians ever to go up into space, looked out upon the earth from that perspective and was alarmed at how few areas of trees there actually are left on the earth. This is a serious issue, very serious issue. Okay, that's one source, our trees. Our second source, four million years ago, the continent of Pangaea was on the earth. And on this continent, vegetation rose and rose. It, just, it had a carbon intense environment, the sunlight came through and there was just vegetation and there's probably hundreds and hundreds of feet of this vegetation. A couple of million years later, the continents broke up, there was upheaval, there was hurricanes, there was earthquakes, there was volcanoes. And what happened? Well, that all went underground, all that vegetation went beneath the ground. It stayed there for a couple of million years under intense heat, under intense pressure. Lo and behold, in our modern times, about 150 years ago, Humans figured out a way to take a straw, dip it in to the earth, and pull out ancient sunlight for an energy source. Hoorah! That's great. The start of the Industrial Revolution. Here's an interesting correlation to this. The year 1800, the earth finally had a billion people. 200, a mere 210 years later, we have six and a half billion people on this planet. We can't sustain this, or maybe there is. I hope someone can come up with a solution to sustain that many people. We can't keep cutting down trees and putting up crops to feed all of these people. We can't keep dipping a stick into the earth at the risk of an environmental catastrophe so that you and I can drive to Walmart or maybe we can drive to Disney World. We just can't sustain this anymore. I mean, NAFTA is not a person. No. Carbon cap and trading is not a person. Despite what some people think, the acronym for corporations running across the ticket is not a person. I'm a person. You're a person. You are a person. Kimberly, your daughter is a person. Jim Willie, your kids are people. Right? This affects people. People on the Gulf Coast, well, Louisiana and now Texas, are real people. Now, I'm not just going to sit up here and spout out problems, because that's just empty wind and empty words. But what I'm going to tell you is there are some plans of action. Number one, my first one is you can read this book. This is what this speech is based on. It's called The Last Hours of Ancient Sunlight by a guy by the name of Tom Hartman. He outlines all the issues 
But he also comes up with clever solutions. One of his solutions is to take the oil that we have to gain independence from the oil we don't need. Wow, what a novel idea. But then there's going to be some special interests that probably aren't going to dig that. But you know what? I don't care. I know Senator's son. I know old man's son. I know banker's son. In the immortal words of John Fogarty, I'm not a fortunate one. And I'm going to go out of the limb and say everybody in this room is probably not a fortunate one either. So what are we going to do? So what do you do? Number one, you can read that book and you can pass it along to somebody else that will have that solution. Number two, you can look inside yourself and ask the question, what is the future of my loved ones worth? How much money is that worth? How much effort is that worth? Now, I don't want this all to be a downer, so I'm going to end on a, a note of optimism from the poem Invictus by Henley. I'm going to modify it a little bit. In the end, it says, We, the collective humanity, are the masters of our destiny. We, collective humanity, are the captains of our soul. Now, at the risk of not being funny, what are you going to do? I'm sure